From insulting a player's dead mom to telling a player what their wife tastes like, these are the most disrespectful players in NBA history. James Harden has trashed his own teammates, instigated fights, and turned careers into memes. This man has no chill. I mean, it doesn't get more disrespectful than this. Or did you think it was certain to work? I thought it was going to be oh, man, hard. Oh, he stared at Wesley Johnson, and then he hits a three. Disgusting. Harden broke his ankles, stared him dead in the eyes, and shot the cleanest three I've ever seen. Ooh. But this past year, he's gotten more disrespectful than ever. It started early in 2020, when Harden and Giannis were racing for MVP. Giannis was a team captain for the All-Star game, in charge of drafting his team. And when it came down to Harden, Kimba, and Trey on the board, Giannis took a shot at Harden. Okay, this is a tough one. Um, I'm between Kimba, Trey Young, Wait, you don't, but I gotta the, go. you don't want the dribbler? <laughs> <laughs> I want somebody that's gonna pass the ball, that's what I want. <laughs> this moment set Harden off, and during an ESPN interview, he fired back some disrespectful shots. Well, makes a joke on the air about, uh, I want to take someone who can pass, I'm taking Kemba Walker instead of James Harden. I have more assist than him, I think. So I don't, see, I, don't, I don't see what the joke is. I just know none of them can mess with me. <laughs> but I wish I could just run. Run and with seven feet and running, just dunk. Like that takes no skill at all. <laughs> I gotta actually learn how to play basketball and how to have skill, you know? Damn, Harden. Yeah, that's why Giannis had to do you dirty. Kukla gonna try and back down. Oh, and he hit Harden in the head. All right, I'm gonna be honest. That clip happened a year before. But I just had to put it in the video, all right, man? But the point still stands. Harden has caused a lot of drama, and he didn't stop at Giannis. He started disrespecting his own team. In the playoffs last year, rumors started circulating that Harden and his teammates were getting into arguments in the locker room. So it didn't surprise anyone when Harden demanded the trade this season. But the way Harden went about it was beyond disrespectful. Instead of showing up on time to training camp, Harden was out partying with Lil Baby. And when he did show up, man, he was fatter than ever. Harden even came out and said he felt the Rockets weren't good enough and couldn't be fixed. So when his new teammate DeMarcus Cousins was asked about the situation, he brought some news to the table. The disrespect started way before, you know, any interview. Just the approach to the training camp, showing up the way he did, the antics off the court. I mean, the disrespect started way before. Jimmy Butler is so disrespectful that a single trash talking incident cost him tens of thousands of dollars. This moment went down in 2020 in a game between the Heat and the Pacers. With 629 left in the third quarter, Butler ran around a screen and drove to a wide open paint. But TJ Warren was there and he grabbed him and wouldn't let go. Jimmy felt it was a little too rough, so he got right in TJ's face. Jimmy was yelling things like, you're f***ing trash. He called TJ soft, so they both got technical fouls. But that wasn't it. On the very next play, they were getting physical, and Jimmy committed an offensive foul on TJ. So TJ started taunting Jimmy, yelling things like and clapping in his ears. So officials called another technical, and TJ was ejected. On his way to the tunnel, Jimmy started blowing him kisses and clapping back. And TJ kept yelling things and flipping off Jimmy. And they were both fined $25,000 after the game. But Jimmy didn't hold back when he was asked about this. He did an interview in the locker room post game, completely humiliating TJ. He made fun of him cause he didn't drop a like and subscribe to the channel. The hell's wrong with this dude? Don't he know he close to a mil? Damn. But Jimmy also clowned him about what happened on the court. I think it's tough for him because I can guard him and he can't guard me. Like at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. I ain't scared of nobody. So, you know, he talking about, oh, we gonna fight this, that, this, that. It is what it is to me. And then what, did you notice the middle finger from him and was the blowing of the kiss? He's soft. He's not, he's not even in my f***ing league, like nowhere near me. Um, and if, if I was their coach, I would, I would never put him on me ever again. He, he's like, no, put somebody else on me because I'm, I'm a Taz every time we play. He's trash. Even though Michael Jordan had a reputation for being a trash talker, the things he said to players were beyond disrespectful. In 1995, the Bulls were coming off a playoff loss to the Magic, so training camp was serious. Jordan wouldn't let anyone slack, offense or defense. And the Bulls had just picked up Steve Kerr, a three-point specialist they needed. But when Michael and Steve were going against each other during a scrimmage, 
The two started swearing and arguing. Steve literally disagreed one time, and that was all it took for Jordan to punch him in the face, leaving Steve with a black eye. You know, if that's how Jordan treated his teammates, uh, you can imagine what he did to players on the other team. Obviously, Jordan wasn't scared of anyone, especially not Muggsy Bogues, the shortest player in history at five foot three. Muggsy was a great player, but one moment against the Bulls shattered his confidence. It was game five of the 1995 NBA playoffs, and the Hornets Bulls series was tied two to two. This game determined who went on to the next round, and the Hornets had a chance to win. Down by just one point, Muggsy had the ball during the biggest possession of the game, with Michael Jordan guarding him. Michael stepped back, gave Muggsy space, and yelled to him, shoot it, you f midget. And Muggsy took the shot, but missed terribly. And the Bulls won 85 to 84 to eliminate the Hornets. And this loss humiliated Muggsy. What Jordan said to him kept him up at night. He went from averaging 10 points per game to only five after this. And eventually, he admitted that that play against Jordan ruined his career. LeBron doesn't trash talk much, but if you come at him, he's not gonna hold back. One of the best examples of this was back in 2008 between LeBron and Deshaun Stevenson. Early in the year, the Wizards beat the Cavs, and Deshaun took that as an opportunity to take a shot at LeBron. During the post-game interview, he said, he's overrated, and you can say I said that. A few months went by and things were quiet until the playoffs came around. The Cavs and the Wizards were facing off for the third straight year, and LeBron was known to come in and dominate Washington, averaging around 32 points, six assists, and eight rebounds against them. And the Wizards knew their defense wasn't enough to stop them. So that's where Deshaun Stevenson had some value to try and get in LeBron's head. But uh, that didn't work at all. LeBron was asked about Deshaun's quote earlier in the year, and he said, with Deshaun Stevenson, it's kind of funny. It's almost like Jay-Z responding to a negative comment made by Soldier Boy. It just doesn't make sense to respond. Damn! You ain't gotta do Soldier Boy like that. Come on, Brog, don't act like you weren't cranking that. And funny enough, after LeBron said this, Soldier Boy showed up to game three, waving towels, dancing, and repping the Wizards. So Jay-Z had to step in because him and LeBron are boys. Jay went and recorded a freestyle to the song Blow the Whistle. And he spit bars like, ask LeBron, we so big, we ain't gotta respond. Who the fuck overrated? If anything, they underpaid him. Hayden, that's only gonna make him spend the night out of spite with the chick you've been dating. Ooh, damn, Jay-Z. And with that, th this beef was over. Not only did LeBron and Jay ruin Deshaun's dignity, the Wizards also got blown out of the series, four to two. But this wasn't the last time someone tried to come at the King. During a game between the Cavs and the Bulls, one fan let his courtside seats get to his head. Crybaby jokes, Clown on LeBron's hairline. Things were getting out of control until LeBron really responded. Shut up, stop crying. You lost Kyrie. You lost D-Rose. Take your point guard for your life. D-Rose dipped on you. Huh? Kobe Bryant had no chill. He didn't care whose feelings he hurt. Not even his own teammates. Like, this one time after a loss, Kobe was so mad, he made his teammates throw their shoes away. On the All The Smoke podcast, Lou Will and Nick Young broke down what happened after a blowout loss. We was getting blew out in, um, in Portland. Kobe's in the locker room just waiting for everybody to come in. And you know everybody down there got Kobe's on the team, so. Yeah. He come in, he said, y'all playing like blah, 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 soft, and how y'all gonna wear these shoes and y'all soft ain't what we do here in LA. So. I'm not thinking nothing of it. He tells everybody to take their shoes off, they Kobe off. I'm like, what? I'm like, what's wrong with you, man? I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> nah, take them off, take them off. And y'all did? And we took them off. Man. Was, uh, <laughs> did y'all throw them in the middle of like the? Uh, in the middle of the pal, like he found them all, he just started grabbing people's shoes and just throw them, he threw them all in the trash. Oh, and wow. he's like, y'all don't deserve these. Until y'all get it right, y'all can't wear no Kobe's. <laughs> Kevin Garnett was one of the most notorious trash talkers in NBA history, but sometimes he went way too far and it scarred players for life. The first time this happened was during the 1999 playoffs. Kevin and the Timberwolves were facing Tim Duncan and the Spurs, and Kevin really wanted to win this series, so he tried anything to get in Tim Duncan's head. And on this particular game, it was Mother's Day. Unfortunately, 
Duncan's mom passed away from breast cancer nine years earlier, one day before his 14th birthday. So Kevin saw his opportunity and he took it. As Duncan lined up for a free throw that game, Kevin yelled at him, happy Mother's Day, mother f Jesus, man. Obviously, Tim Duncan hated Kevin for this, but he never responded to nonsense on the court. Instead, Duncan made sure to circle the games against Kevin on his calendar and go all in for a win each time. But this wasn't the only time Kevin did something nasty to a player. Kevin Garnett was Joakim Noah's childhood idol. And in 2007, Joakim was a rookie. So this was the first time that he got to meet his idol in person. Before the game, Joakim walked up to Kevin and said, man, KG, I had your poster on my wall. I looked up to you, man. And Kevin responded saying, F you Noah, and walked away. <laughs> yeah, Joakim was crushed and from that point on, he hated Kevin. But hey, at least Kevin didn't hook up with his wife like he did to another player. That moment came in 2013 between Kevin Garnett and Carmelo Anthony. They were playing a physical game in Madison Square Garden and eventually things went too far. The two were getting tangled up, yelling in each other's faces and got technical fouls. In the middle of the scuffle, Garnett yelled to Melo saying, hey, your wife tastes like Honey Nut Cheerios. <gasps> Oh damn! And Carmelo took this personally. After the game, he showed up to the Celtics locker room and yelled at Kevin through the door, then followed him to their team bus and the situation got out of control. Five NYPD officers, arena security, and Knicks coach Mike Woodson had to come separate them. And after this, Carmelo said, I lost my cool. It's just something you don't say to another man. Kevin Durant has been known for his Twitter fingers, but on the court, he's as savage as they come. One moment came back in 2011 between the Thunder and the Heat. In the first quarter, Kevin and Chris Bosh started jawing at each other and they got technicals. But the situation started from a conversation between Kevin and James Harden. Chris Bosh broke it down and said, I think he was telling Harden to dunk on me. I expressed that no, he's not gonna dunk that. And it just kind of went back and forth. But uh, you know, Kevin took the situation personally, like he always does. So he came at Bosh recklessly in the post game interview saying, I'm no punk. I wasn't even talking to him first off. He decided to butt in and I'm not just going to let that slide. He's on a good team now, so he thinks he can talk a little bit. There's a lot of fake tough guys in this league and he's one of them. Maybe Kevin should have stayed quiet. I mean, after all, the Heat dominated the Thunder in the next year's finals where things mattered the most. And eventually, Kevin got a great team of his own, teaming up with the Warriors. And he pretty much turned into Chris Bosh based on what he said before. Kevin and Draymond were teammates for years. So he witnessed the trash talking firsthand. And Draymond talked about him saying, KD makes you feel bad about yourself, that you ever talk junk. It's the funniest thing in the world, especially when you got legends like Shaq constantly disrespecting NBA players. I mean, Shaq is so disrespectful, he's been in Twitter beefs with damn near everyone. He's been in rap battles. Even his mom had to get him to chill out. Wait, you wanna hear more about that? Well, click on this video right here. These are the times that Shaq disrespected NBA players and it gets pretty ugly. 